Oh my goodness, we have the best show for you today, the Fantasy Football MVP episode. You look forward to it all year long. The NFL season's here. A lot of big experts contributing their picks. Don't miss it. Hey, Foot Clan, it's your last chance to get in on the Ultimate Draft Kit. You got your drafts coming up. I mean, we see we see how many of you are in the Ultimate Draft Kit right now, and it's hundreds of you. You got your draft each and every night, some of you this weekend. This is your last chance to get in at ultimatedraftkit.com, and guess what? It's DFS season as well. We've got the DFS pass. If you want to save a little quiche, Ooh. you can get the combo at ultimatedraftkit.com. The Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. NFL fans always love arguing whether offense wins games or defense wins championships, and we all know that Head & Shoulders is great defense against fleeks. I've been very clear. It's great offense for your hair, Mike. Yes, but it's also better defense. No matter where you fall in the offense versus defense deba debate, Head & Shoulders will give you a 100% flake-free scalp. Find Head & Shoulders on Walmart.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be great. I was speaking before the show with Judge Giamatti. He confirmed, going to be a great show. That's what he said. They all are. He said football's coming soon. I didn't believe him, but then I checked, and it, it is. One week. Well, technically, there's probably football <laughs> going on today and tomorrow and this weekend. And yeah. And Real now. football. Real always, football in one week. You always trust an employee when they say that every show is the best. That's the real most trustworthy source is the person that makes their living off of your own satisfaction with what they say. We better keep it going, guys. Yeah. Hot streak. <laughs> It's Thursday, August 29th. Welcome in. This is the Fantasy MVP episode. We have Ooh. some. We're going to break out our fantasy football MVPs for 2019. We got some special guests who will be bringing their MVP picks. It's a very fun episode. A Hall of Fame lineup. Yeah, and they don't get to reply. Like they are, they break out their picks. Mm -hmm. Then we, you know, say whatever we want about them and we move on. They have no rebuttal. It's yeah, this, just like we like it. It's the best way to debate against somebody. It oh, is. Have absolutely. them record their favorite MVP and then never speak to them again. <laughs> never again. But we've got some uh, great names that will be sharing their fantasy football MVPs. We're talking Brad Evans, Seven Silva, J.J. Zacharyson, Marcus Grant, Jake Seeley, Matthew Barry, Adam Rank, Jamie and then, Eisenberg. And then three superstars <laughs> Yeah, at the end. Al Borland, Brooks, and me. Oh, we should have made Judge Giamatti give one. Oh, we know Judge Giamatti's. I think I know your – correct me if I'm wrong here, Judge Giamatti. Is your fantasy MVP for this season David Njoku? He'd be a candidate for sure. I yes. figured it was Tony Pollard. I did. That's where I was going to go. Yeah. Um, we got some news we'll get into as well. If you want to share your fantasy football MVP picks with us, you can go to Twitter at the FF Ballers on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. We're on YouTube. And the website is thefantasyfootballers.com. Here's your quick question of the day. What is your favorite time of year for fantasy football? So mm. apparently rankings, it's very important that we put things in order. Nothing can be equally valued. So you have to pick now. What's your favorite time of year for fantasy football? Is it A, draft day? So this mm. is the multiple choice. B, the fantasy season in the playoffs. C, the entire offseason, so the NFL playoffs, the Super Bowl, the NFL draft, and training camp. And you now have to pick. Look, it's, uh, it's an easy pick for me, but, it's an, it, but, it, but I, I do have a, a, caution, a cautionary word. It's the draft day. Like, draft day is unbelievable. You, you, you spend a month, or in our case, a year preparing for uh, the, that moment. You get your buddies together. You get your... Uh, spread of treats laid out. It's just a glorious moment. And then, of course, when you leave the draft, I mean, you always win. You you yeah. you drafted the guys you wanted. It, nothing is worse than leaving a draft where you go, man, 
I hate my team. But the thing is, is I caution everybody. We Look, you're listening to the show because you love fantasy football. You've enjoyed the draft or you're about to enjoy the draft. Don't get too high up on the draft day because we say it a lot. That's not where you win the championship. You win the championship with those waivers and those trades and those those start, start sit, sit yeah. decisions as the year goes on when you're getting close to the playoffs. And I remember back, you know, a decade ago, I used to get so amped up for the draft that once the draft was over, I was like, whew, I'm I did it. I'm done. I did it. I'm going to have a great team, a great season. I didn't stick with it. And then, you know, that's where it was like, make the playoffs f first out. Yeah, and I think I, I think fantasy football has changed from a decade ago, too. Like, not only were you, you know, at the beginning of your illustrious career when you made that decision and you've matured from it, but the NFL isn't the same. More backfields have multiple running backs that matter each and every week. So the waiver wire suddenly, it's not just there for – the injuries where you pick up the backup, it's also, oh, oh, this guy's got a role. That guy's got a role. Things like that. I will not I will not choose. Oh. I, I choose not to choose. I will choose two of them. Draft day and the season. I will not there are highlights in the off season that this, happen. This guy over I here. Do, I I do what I want. There are highlights during the off season. We're in keeper leagues, dynasty leagues, rookie draft, keeper deadlines. NFL draft. Those are all fun highlights. But you know what? No games are being played. So I'm not picking the offseason. Draft day is incredible. But I'm rolling that right into the season. We're going to have games being played. <laughs> I'm choosing A and B. A and B is the answer. I choose fantasy football. Yeah, does that mean I can pick all three? Unfortunately, I've already exhausted that, the multi-choice. Yeah, that shtick has been taken, Mike. Yes. That's fine. It was very funny. I have my... <laughs> I have my yeah, I yeah. have my answer... It's uh, and it's B, and it's only actually if if I have to say my favorite, it's half of B. It's the B, playoffs. B is fantasy season yeah, and playoffs. We were getting there, uh, but the fantasy playoffs that week, as once once one, you're one, in, it's usually one week for Mike. Right, the fantasy that one playoffs week. are one week. <laughs> How many league of record championships do you have, Jay? Uh, more, more or less than me. Who has the most recent League of Record championship, More Mike? or less. You or me. More or less. <laughs> Continue. Offense or defense. <laughs> Look, it, but that week of the excitement, tinkering with your lineup, making decisions, freaking out, thinking you've made the wrong decisions, just the entire buildup to that huge moment of Sunday, which – can be thrown off by Thursday night football, which that's that's a whole new level of tilt when you go into Thursday and Kaimi Fairbairn puts up twenty freaking points as a kicker. Look, things things get wild <laughs> in that lead up to the I playoffs. I can see why it's your favorite time of year. Well, it's it's a it's an ex, it's an anxiety, but it's a good anxiety that it, it lets you know you're alive, man. Yeah, it's the thrill ride. People yes. love roller coasters. It's going to put you through an emotional. I'm so excited. You might throw I'm so up. So scared. The end. You might. You might throw up. Yeah. All right. We don't have a ton of news. You might have got the alert this morning about uh, this Ezekiel Elliott update of sorts. Jerry Jones kind of hedging. That's what I would say. He suggested that the Cowboys are bracing for up to a six-week regular season holdout. He talked about the fact that they need him during the dog days of the season. They need him for the playoffs. They might not need him right away. And this is posturing and positioning for Zeke to miss some games, for them to be able to negotiate with the leverage of we don't care if you're there week one. That's the way that I've interpreted this. But fantasy owners that just drafted Ezekiel Elliott don't want to hear that, that the team is okay going into the season without him on the field. And I know you two were, were busy adjusting some yep. projections in the ultimate draft kit based on this admission that this team is willing to Take it into the season. Yeah, he's <clears> – <throat> Elliot's going to be an incredible – It it's a tough decision. So we had our listener league draft yesterday. We hadn't had this news, but if you've been following the show, I my my nerves have been getting more and more rattled, realizing that he will, in fact, miss some games. I honestly didn't think he would, but we don't have a lot to go off of. And I said – I'm, I'm still going to take Zeke number four. If you look at the rankings, he has plummeted. So 
I'm actually still okay taking him in the first round. It just means that I'm going to reach for Tony Pollard. And Which that's you a, did yesterday. That's exactly what I did in the league of, in the listener league. I took Zeke at number four, and then in the sixth round, I said, I'm not screwing around. I'm not going to play any games here. Maybe I get him, maybe I don't. I grabbed Tony Pollard there. Yes, it sucks. It sucks to spend a first and a sixth round pick for one position, for one backfield. But we have seen the starting running back for Dallas behind that offensive line have great success when it's not Zeke. Like, if you remember the days of Alfred Morris, I mean, the, the, the guy was running up really high yards per carry when he had looked completely washed in Washington. Tony Pollard is set to be the guy for Dallas. So I, it's, yeah, I mean, it sucks to combine those two picks, but I think between the two of them, you have a a top-tier starting running back option. 100%. Last year, if you were to have drafted Le'Veon Bell and James Conner, you were fine because you still had James Conner. Right. Yeah, and I don't – for what it's worth, I couldn't care less about any of the contract deadlines for tolling seasons with Ezekiel Elliott right. at all. You're going to hear a lot about if he doesn't show up in play eight games, this season doesn't count, which means it's going to get rolled over. Don't care. I care not at all because he's in the fourth of a fifth year, you know, uh, rookie deal. He's a hundred percent playing the leverage of I'm not going to play for you until I get a contract. That's not going to change just because he tolls a season because he's still got another whole year under and contract. He wants, he wants to be a cowboy. That's all he wants to do is get paid. The public news came out about you're going to get paid. You know, the offers between Gurley right. and Lev Bell. He wants more than uh, Todd Gurley, and he'll probably get it. And he'll probably get it in week five or six at this point. So it is the unfortunate change that has happened for, you know, predictability at the fantasy, you know, in the fantasy world that Jason, you talking about 10 years ago, you weren't dealing with as much of that. But these players have to protect their bodies. They have to protect their short careers. So right now, for fantasy owners, make plans for week one, week two, and potentially beyond without Ezekiel Elliott, without Melvin Gordon, because that's just the way it is. Um, we're going to get into the fantasy MVP part of the show. I want to remind you, footclangiveaway.com. We're giving away a signed Alvin Kamara jersey courtesy of Pristine Auction. Uh, this thing is very nice. Very, very nice. Alvin Kamara's season, very likely to be as nice as this jersey. <laughs> it's free to enter. You just go to footclangiveaway.com. A couple free ways to get some entries into that. We'll give it away very soon. Hey, Foot Clan, we want to thank today's sponsor. And whoa, do we want to thank them because they are oh so delicious. I'm talking about M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies. Oh, they're new. They're unbelievable. And they are mighty delicious. Look, everybody out there, you love the chocolate hazelnut spread. You're eating it straight out of the jar. Now imagine that you take that and you take delicious M&M's chocolate candies and you put them together. Game day just got a whole lot better. I keep my snack count 100. Yes, everybody, you do. Everybody you knows do. that about me. When I'm watching football, you know what was at the draft? Snacks. And M&M's hazelnut spread chocolate candies because they are so unbelievably good. I've had them. My wife's had them. You've had them, Mike. Yes. Your Andy's had them. They are truly a delight, and you will love them. They're brand new. You've got to check them out, pick them up, try them. Give us your feedback because they're unbelievable. The M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies are awesome. Go Hazelnutty and try the new M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies today. Tell us how they are. Also, look, fantasy football season, it's here, the NFL season. It is here, and FanDuel has more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every game, every single week. Look, if you've never tried FanDuel, it's a nice compliment to the season-long fantasy football. Uh, new users right now get a $5 bonus with their first deposit. It is a perfect uh, – you got, you got your season-long games. You're, you're, you're defeating your league right. mates. You got your FanDuel. Don't get stuck in – with a lineup that you're going to regret. Mike talked about this earlier. Get some shares of these players that you've wanted to have shares of. And with FanDuel, you can pick a new team every week. Injuries, they're not going to end your season. Zeke problems, eh, Zeke doesn't have to be on your team. What problems? Yeah, get in the action anywhere you want. Sign up for FanDuel now and get a $5 bonus with your first deposit of at least $5. Go to FanDuel.com footballers or download the FanDuel app and see why FanDuel 
is way more than just fantasy sports. That's FanDuel.com slash footballers. Who's your fantasy MVP? All right, we'll get right to it. We're going to start with Jamie Eisenberg from CBS Sports. This is Jamie Eisenberg from CBS Sports, and my fantasy MVP, at least for the first half of the season, is Brown's running back, Nick Chubb. I love the setup for him without Duke Johnson there and with Kareem Hunt suspended for the first eight games. I think Chubb's going to be the best running back, maybe the best fantasy player non-quarterback for the first eight games of the season. You figure out the rest once Kareem Hunt comes back, but you want a guy that's going to get you off to a great start. And we saw what Chubb was able to do last year once he took over for Carlos Hyde as the featured running back for the Browns. From week seven on, he averaged 17.8 PPR points. And I think you're going to see him have the opportunity to do even better than that because I think he'll be more involved in the passing game. Keep in mind that over his final nine games, he had four games with at least three receptions. And this is going to be a much better offense with Odell Beckham on the field. You can get Chubb maybe at the end of round one, beginning of round two, but I think you could take him as a top five running back based on his potential. So we know what the top four running backs are. Barkley, Kamara, McCaffrey, Elliott. I think Chubb is next in line. Again, you take him that spot, you get off to the hot start, you worry about what happens when Hunt comes back, but I think you enjoy what Chubb will give you as the first half fantasy MVP and maybe the league MVP for your fantasy leagues in 2019. All right, Jamie, bring in the Nick Chubb fire. I think the most interesting question for fantasy owners with Nick Chubb, who I've seen go as high as you know four in drafts in place of Ezekiel Elliott, is simply the fact that are you happy if you have a top five running back for 10 weeks? And that's it. Are you content? Are you... Are, would that feel like you made the right pick? It's the inverse Zeke Gordon, right? It's <laughs> right. I mean, not that he's going to, you know, disappear, and, and that's a debate of its own, right? What happens to Nick Chubb? Is he a top twelve back instead of a top five back when Kareem Hunt returns? But are you happy if that's what you get? If you get the league MVP for eight weeks? If I got him for eight weeks, I personally would be happy. I mean, we you don't win at the draft, but if you can have an MVP type player at the running back position then that would be huge for you if you get off to a 6 and 2 start i mean if if you're looking at 6 and 2 i mean and you're still adding players in the meantime you're not just staying stagnant i think what Jamie brings up about the pass catching that's that is the difference what do you believe about nick chubb in the receiving game he is capable the 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 one reception he had for a touchdown where he caught it behind the guy's back i mean that was a sensational play that a lot of running backs cannot make Will he be used with Duke Johnson gone, or will Hilliard just kind of slide right into that Duke Johnson role? Those are things that we don't know, it, it, and that's what you got to ask yourself when you're drafting uh, Nick Chubb, either as high as what he's talking about, either four or five, or if you wait for his ADP. Well, and it's narrative street too, but you you wonder if this team looks like they can or believes that they can stretch Chubb from a workload perspective because of the return of Hunt later in the season or not, and there are – this offseason has been filled with these speculative pass catching running back <laughs> upgrade situations where Always. Carson and Michelle and, and Chubb, can they catch passes because the target is worth so much? So, um, Nick Chubb, the fantasy MVP pick from Jamie Eisenberg. Let's go to Brad Evans. I know this will be <laughs> very entertaining. Hey, Foot Clan. Brad Evans here from Yahoo Sports and shh. You hear that? Something's rummaging through the beer cooler outside my tent. I'm going to go check it out. It's, it's David Montgomery. Elusive, ferocious, and omnivorous, the Bears rookie running back is set to consume would-be tacklers in year one. He's the only collegiate back in the PFF era to top 100 missed tackles in a season. And he did it twice. He boasts a three-down skill set, top 10 O-line, and an elite defense, which means positive game scripts galore. Don't fret over Tariq Cohen or Mike Davis. Out of the gate, Monty rolls Green Bay for 100 combined yards and a score on 17-plus touches. 1,400 total yards with double-digit TDs is entirely doable. All bears poop in the woods, but Monty won't crap on your fantasy <laughs> roster. Oh, Get him. I, I, uh, it's David Montgomery. First of all, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Second of all, um, I'm not buying the fact that you don't keep your beer cooler in your tent. Sure. So, uh, 
<laughs> David Montgomery, if you've followed Brad at all over the last – since he was drafted, David Montgomery's been his guy. We'll get to see him on Thursday, make his debut against uh, Green Bay. And my League of Record team would love nothing more than Brad Evans to be uh, incredibly correct. This show affords the opportunity for some victory laps later on if you can pick it correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we call him David Mopportunity for a reason. His opportunity, as laid out there by Brad Evans, is great. He's got a, a, a vacated role that Jordan Howard left with over 250 carries on a good team that should be in positive game scripts. If he shows that he can play in the NFL, which he, so far everything from camp, from the very little bit we've seen in the preseason says – it looks like he can. He should be able to to dominate, and he's not alone in picking him as a fantasy MVP. That's true, because Adam Rank weighed in. Adam Rank from the NFL. It would be so on brand for me, Adam Rank, to come in here and stump for David Montgomery. So that's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do. David Montgomery is the running back that Matt Nagy has been waiting for. And let's give Nagy credit. Last season, he tried to make it work with Jordan Howard. He gave him the ball 250 times, and he didn't get a lot out of it. And you know what? This year, he is going to give David Montgomery just as many attempts, and he's going to use him as a receiver out of the backfield. David Montgomery was the most elusive running back in college football last year. NFL defenders are not going to be able to keep up. You will be thanking me after week one. All right. We'll, we'll be thanking you and Brad. Very, and very passionate very, about the David Montgomery. Yeah, he, he's a Bears fan too. But I'll say this. At Iowa State, David Montgomery lined up in the slot frequently. We've seen him, at least <laughs> against second-team, third-team defenses, show incredible balance, tackle-breaking ability, versatility. He has a point with the amount of work that Jordan Howard had in the offense. So if you want your Kareem Hunt fit for this team, it's certainly David Montgomery. And like, like he said, he's like, being drafted at RB nineteen, so he's a really nice pick for upside. Sure, and like Rank said, dude, Matt Nagy tried with Jordan Howard. Never forget those first three weeks, especially week one when we when they came out and they gave Jordan Howard, they gave Jordan Howard five targets, and wasn't it four targets week two? Yes, and to be fair to Jordan Howard, he caught all five of them. Granted, those five receptions turned into 25 yards, Ooh, which is, which is <laughs> it's terrible. It's pretty amazing for a running back to be that unproductive. But they tried. It, it really seems like that's what Matt Nagy wants. You don't need to look at the Bears' backfield and feel like you have to pick and choose with Cohen and Montgomery the same way you would with another backfield because Cohen, even last year, lined up over 30% of the time, no, not in the backfield at all, in the slot, at wide receiver, He's a weapon that Matt Nagy will use because Matt Nagy is not a moron. He's yeah. a smart offensive mind. But there'll be plenty of snaps with both players on the field. If you believe in the talent of Montgomery, then he represents a potential you know, RB18 that ends up in the top 12. And I don't know what Montgomery would have to do to be the MVP. Does he have to finish in the top six? Probably not. If he's a top 10 a, running back, I think he's an MVP. Yeah, I think if he's an RB1, top 12, then where you're drafting him right now as the 19th, you're going to be loaded. And and the truth is, having David Montgomery finish lower than the running back 19 is going to be very difficult because he has a three-down skill set and has the starting role. And this was the first year for Mitch Trubisky in that offense. Allen Robinson's first year there off the ACL. Anthony Miller was a rookie. We've seen quarterbacks and offenses level up after another year in this system we have and they were still from what I can recall the 12th best offense in football last year in points scored I could it could be yardage it's one or the other it was a top half offense in one of those metrics in their first year there's no reason to believe that the Chicago defense couldn't put Montgomery on the goal line more often this year just as an, a chain moving offense so I think it'll be interesting we're going to move on 
J.J. Zacharyson. Great friend of the show. Editor-in-chief at FanDuel and Number Fire. Bring in his fantasy MVP pick. What's up, fellas? It's your boy JJ here. And my MVP for the fantasy football season is none other than my go-to late-round quarterback this year, Lamar Jackson. Now, of course, we need him to improve as a passer to really be a difference maker in fantasy football. But that could happen with Greg Roman running this offense. Roman was able to help both Colin Kaepernick and Tyrod Taylor hit their highest marks in passing efficiency when he coached them. And as we know... Both of those players are dual-threat quarterbacks, just like Lamar Jackson. If he gets better as a passer, then we know the potential is there. Jackson hit just under 700 rushing yards last year in basically half the season. I think it's safe to say that a healthy Lamar Jackson can hit that mark again. Well, since the turn of the century, we've had eight instances where a quarterback has rushed for 700 or more yards on the ground. Of those eight instances, seven of them finish as top five quarterbacks in fantasy football that season. Lamar Jackson is a cheat code, and he should be everyone's favorite late-round quarterback target. Uh, I, I endorse this message. <laughs> I fully support it. It's uh, I was feeling it while he once the name you was were. uttered. You looked like a like a macaw. I it was like I was on a Lamar Jackson IV drip. I mean, it was it felt good, man. I love Lamar Jackson. And that's the stat about the rushing is like seven of eight. That's uh, that's really hard to argue against because I I don't think any of us think Lamar Jackson will have fewer than 700 rushing yards. Here, here's the crazy thing is it's like okay, but so should Josh Allen. Can they sure? Can they both be in the top five? Who all are they kicking out of that area? I mean that that's gonna that's gonna be the hard. Not everybody can finish top five. Only five quarterbacks can do it. Uh, and Math I, checks out. Yeah, and he he brought up that he's a cheat code, and we've talked. So much Not about, enough. about the fact that Jason doesn't like the scoring, but talking about it, complaining about it, to me, is not changing. This is the way it is, and you can debate the merits of it. You can debate the value of a running quarterback in football. None of that matters. As of right now, running quarterbacks are great for fantasy football. So Josh Allen, uh, Lamar. Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, Cam Newton, they're all valuable at a different rate because of what they do with their legs. I love the pick. I think it's got a high probability of being right, being the, you know, where he's being drafted, which has moved up. It has moved up. Lamar was going further. He right now he's in the ninth round. Wow, he's yeah. moved up a he's lot. He's moved up a lot. So, Mike, that, Mike, you've taken him in yesterday's listener league as yep. a second quarterback late. I love doing that with Lamar, Allen, Kyler Murray. Watch week one and two. What happens? You either have a player that explodes, and maybe your other quarterback's fine, and you. You know, you can go back and forth, stream those guys if you drafted them late. You got a trade bait, and then you can just drop them if they're not what you think they are. Right. Yeah, I, I'm I'm all on board, but I will say this. Between the two, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, since there are so many similarities in how they score and why they're going to be great, I, I will still take Josh Allen because he's, for some reason, he's completely undrafted. Like, nobody wants Josh Allen. Everyone's on board now with Lamar Jackson. All right, let's turn to the godfather of fantasy, Matthew Barry, with his fantasy MVP pick. I'm curious. What's up, boys? Matthew Barry here. And my fantasy MVP this season, how about Chris Carson of the Seattle Seahawks? He's a lead running back that I think is going way too late. He's currently going in the fifth on ESPN. I have him as a third rounder, and I think he could be an RB1 this season. Look, we know the volume is going to be there. Seattle, the run-heaviest team in the NFL. Last year, Chris Carson averaged 17.6 carries per game. That was third most in the NFL. In the nine games last year in which he got 15 or more carries, he ran for a touchdown in eight of them. And I don't think that's going to change this year. He is still going to be the lead running back. I'm not worried about Rashad Penny. Remember, Mike Davis left 146 touches from last year. He's now in Chicago. So I think Penny can increase and Carson can still be the main guy here. It's still a very good offensive line. Again, and after Tyler Lockett, there's not a lot in the passing game there. So I believe Brian Schottenheimer when he says they want Chris Carson to catch about 50 balls this year. So, yeah, give me some Chris Carson, especially considering the value of him in the fifth round. And it wouldn't be me, guys, if I didn't promote something. So all of your listeners can go to rotopass.com and get 10% off if they use the promo code FOOTCLAN. Always great to talk to you guys. Good luck this year. 50 balls, man. If Chris Carson <laughs> will be the number one running back. If Chris Carson catches fifty passes, if, like that would be absolute insanity. It, Chris Carson, uh, hopefully, I'm not stealing any thunder here from you, Andy. But like, he's so much like Sony Michelle 
it, it, the offense is set up exactly the same where if the Patriots <laughs> are winning, which the Patriots are going to be in a lot of positive game scripts, guess who's going to be great? Sony Michelle. If Seattle is in positive game scripts, guess who's going to be great? Chris Carson. So if you if you're buying in on Seattle still being a a good team, a a top half NFL team, then Chris Carson is going to be fantastic. Uh, Chris Carson, obviously, uh, I'll let you finish here, Andy, because he's one of your my guys. He's a guy you've been touting for a long time. You yeah, so really let us him. talk about him. Go uh, for it. I'm I'm enjoying this. I would just. <laughs> Get Brooks, some popcorn, please. Yeah. So with Chris Carson, I just while while Barry was talking in the fifty reception mark, like that's what they're saying they they want to try to get. I don't have him down for near that. Um, if that happens, he would go. Did I you just, do some projections? I did projections in in what in, if? So right now he's my running back fifteen, which I still think he could very easily finish above that. But if he were to get fifty receptions in my rankings, he moves to the running back four in my model. Yeah. He would be only behind Saquon Kamara and Christian McCaffrey. I don't expect him to get 50 receptions, uh, but if he did, that would be a huge game changer. Yeah, and that's why he was the bold prediction pick on our show where I think he can be a top five guy. Here's my biggest problem with Chris Carson. Believe it or not, I have a problem. It's that he's being drafted kind of around ahead of Sonny Michelle, so I'm like... Mm. You know, I look at those players in the exact same lens that you said, Mike. I, I've i been very happy to add Carson or Michelle as my third running back and then not touching my running backs for the rest of a draft. But at times I'm like, I want Sony. I want Carson. I like the upside. Definitely has an opportunity as a fantasy MVP. All right, let's turn to Marcus Grant from the NFL. What up, y'all? It's Marcus Grant from NFL Fantasy Live. Shout out to the footballers for letting me be a part of this thing. I will tell you that my MVP originally was going to be Andrew Luck, but, uh, well, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to come outside the box a little bit and tell you that my fantasy MVP for 2019 is going to be Carson Wentz. He has been close to being something really great. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. I think this is finally the year, maybe partially because – the Eagles don't have that safety net now that Nick Foles is in Jacksonville. I think they figure out a way to get Wentz through a full 16-game schedule. Look, the weapons are there. We know the talent is there. It's just been a matter of him staying on the field. I think this is the year he finally does it. And with the draft price of him coming off the board late in drafts, I think he turns out to be a top-three quarterback, and he will be your fantasy MVP. Now, Andy, you and I love Chris Carson. We talked about that on yesterday's Carson Wentz. Car Carson Wentz. We talked about that yesterday. Are you on playing Wheel of Fortune? You're doing <laughs> Chris Carson Wentz? Ooh, I like. Dude, does that give me both players? Um, on the fantasy court, we argued against you, Mike. Yes. So I love this take, Unsuccessfully, Marcus. by the way. Successfully. Uh, I love this take, <laughs> but I do have one issue with what Marcus said. He said, now there's no safety net behind right. Carson Wentz. And I was <laughs> Josh McCown begs to differ, my friends. That is an excellent point. <laughs> oh, he would ball out. How? Okay. Unhelpful speculation here. But what if? Oh, I can't wait. What if? My body is ready for Josh McCown's Super Bowl. He what would, what yes. happens if you go Foles? Yes. Foles gets you there. <clears throat> then Foles gets you to the playoffs. Then Josh McCown gets you to the playoffs. And Carson Wentz is sitting there holding the bag. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if if Josh McCown gets the job, he's going to be on a five thousand yard, seven hundred touchdown pace. He's uh, he's going to be able to. How long is he going to play though? Is, oh, oh he who will cares? He'll kamikaze himself in two games. It's just if you're Josh McCown at this point in your life with those weapons, you just came out of retirement. You literally have nothing to lose whatsoever to fire that ball all over the field. It'll be like Ryan Fitzpatrick on steroids. <laughs> So whoa, let's whoa whoa whoa. Um, honestly, how's he playing this long without steroids? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Allegedly, um, Evan Silva from Establish the Run with his fantasy MVP pick. Hello, this is Evan Silva from Establish the Run. dot com. My fantasy MVP this year is Mike Evans, wide receiver, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, hooking up this season with Bruce Arians, one of the most legendary downfield uh, vertical passing offensive minds of our generation. Mike Evans has finished top five in the NFL in air yards each of the last 
four seasons and uh, has a thousand yards in each of his five NFL seasons. Um, you know, I think that this passing game distribution in Tampa Bay has been narrowed and squeezed uh, with the losses of Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson. And Mike Evans is going to really take over uh, very much of that Deshaun Jackson role, who in Deshaun Jackson, by the way, led the NFL in yards per reception last year. And Mike Evans is going to run even more vertical routes this season with Chris Godwin in the slot and O.J. Howard dominating at tight end. I think we're going to see a ton of pass attempts this year in Tampa Bay. My favorite second-round pick, and I think that Mike Evans has a real good shot this year to finish as the number one overall wide receiver in fantasy. Ooh, spicy. I love it, man, because Mike Evans has been there. And by been there, I mean like he's just he's a second-round pick. But he's not getting talked about really in fantasy football, even though he's been great all five years that he's been in the league. I think that's more a product of our excitement, fantasy football's excitement for Chris Godwin and O.J. Howard to break out. But remember when Mike Evans had 173 targets? Like, Silva's not wrong. That might happen again. What's been strange about him is he had so many red zone targets he didn't come down with last year. So, you again, you're leaning on Winston to supply the power for the MVP pick. That's more of the question mark. I can't imagine, you know, what if Josh McCown and Bruce Arians came together in some situation? Right. That would just be the greatest downfield threat of all. So, you know, Winston, unlike Derek Carr, who seems more hesitant to throw the ball down the field, Winston will do that. But he has to do it accurately. He has to convert more of those red zone opportunities for him to be the MVP, and it could definitely happen. My 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 issue with Mike Evans, I, I look, my League of Record team is really hoping Evan Silva's right on this one. I've got Mike Evans. Love him there. Uh, I think he's going to be great for fantasy. But, he, you know, a couple years ago, he was the number two wide receiver in fantasy, and that was on the back, Mike, of what you said, 173 targets, right? But look at that team then. Adam Humphreys was there, the next highest targeted with 83, and then you're talking about Russell Shepard and Charles Sims. Like, there there weren't Chris Godwin and, and O.J. Howard to siphon targets away. They also so, didn't win. Right, but the last couple of years, you've seen him more in the 135 target range I, I would be surprised if you saw Mike Evans jump back up to three years ago when they didn't have other targets I think sorry I think the difference he's that Silva's talking about is Bruce Arians is now yep. Bruce Arians likes to throw the ball Bruce and, Arians is now as it, Mike said yeah and the difference between Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson which t Jacks always got overthrown Mike Evans is 6'5 it's it's a little bit harder to overthrow him it will be interesting because I think most of those arguments are going to apply to the success of Chris Godwin and O.J. Howard as well. If the offense is moving and there's narrowed receiving options, then both of those players are going to benefit. And there was so much preseason, offseason talk about Godwin that kind of died down. Everybody knows that he's a talent. But I think that there are a lot of people deciding, can Chris Godwin be like my wide receiver one? Oof, no. Can he be my one if I go running backs – in the first three rounds. But, and um, I i mean, Chris Godwin or Tyler Boyd, who would you rather have manning your number one spot on your roster? I think Godwin has more upside. I would agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I would concur. The one thing that I definitely do put in the favor of Mike Evans when I was making my bold prediction on the bold prediction episodes of Juju as the number one wide receiver overall, and I'm doing the research and looking at if you want to finish there, you have to have north of 12 touchdowns. Mike Evans can do that. Right. That That's how Mike Evans could finish as the number one. Is not. On, I don't think it's going to be on the back of 170 targets. I think it would be on the back of 13, 14 touchdowns. All right. Super best friend time. Jake Seeley, all-in kid, the senior writer for the Athletic Fantasy and the host of the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast, which will be debuting Mike, do you have a date for us? Next week. Next week. What is a date, the date it is. <laughs> well, I don't it's Friday. The the DFS My show. My birthday's next week. The DFS show always comes out on yes. Fridays, and I just didn't have a calendar. So uh September sixth. So that'll be uh incredible. We've got his MVP pick. Uh take it away, Jake. Hey footballers, sit your favorite guy in the business, Jake Seeley at Olin Kid, or at least I like to tell myself that. 
I love you guys, and I got to tell you, for fantasy MVP, man, this is this is a tough one. I want to name a million people, mostly because I look at it as part of the question, which I'm sure you guys do, is value, and especially middle rounds, finding that value. Like, what I'd love to say Darius Geis and Miles Blake and, and Christian Kirk, and the list goes on, D.D. Westbrook, but I'll give you one that's going to the third round, sometimes even fourth, that should return close to first round value. And that's my boy. You guys know Josh Jacobs. I say my boy. Everybody is not like he's undrafted or even going that late. I said third, fourth round. But I said time and again, John Gruden, when given the chances, used a bell cow running back. 290 carries in 14 games for Cadillac Williams when he drafted him in the first round. Josh Jacobs can do it all, will do it all, will near or eclipse 300 touches, and in doing so, will return RB1 value in the third round, which that alone right there makes him the fantasy MVP for 2019. Love you guys. Have a good one. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> we love you too. And I'm not going to say these guys. But I'm going to get that, – like, that was a classic Jason move right there. He wants there. credit oh, yeah. for the names he threw out? Yeah, that was – pro move, Jake. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Josh Jacobs, I like the – you know, when you think about John Gruden, what he wants, yeah, what he's got behind Josh Jacobs, fighting tooth and nail to turn this franchise around, I don't I, – he knows, he knows what he has behind Jacobs, and he's not content to the point of taking a first-round running back – the high, the most highly scouted one, and so he should have the workload. He yeah. should have the opportunity. We haven't seen him do it, even going back to college, to the degree that you know he would need to be the fantasy MVP. But I think it's possible. He's drafted at RB eighteen right now in the back of the third round. He's going behind Chris Carson. I love it, man. I, I think Josh Jacobs is is a fantastic running back. I've had brought up a few weeks ago how crazy it was to me that. The David Montgomery hype had gotten so spiraled out of control that he was starting to go in front of the first round running back, Josh Jacobs. It was just, it was absolutely wild to me. He's, to me, is one of the safest volume guarantees of the running backs in, in this year's fantasy drafts. All right, it's our turn, guys. Our fantasy football MVPs Finally. for 2019. I'll go first. We mentioned his name. Here's my fantasy football MVP. I believe you've met my fitness <laughs> consigliere, Michelle. Sony Michelle, <laughs> second year New England Patriots running back, former first round pick, playoff dominator, Super Bowl champion. That's a nice rookie season, by the way. Not reflected in the average draft position due to injury concerns, due to not being proven at all in any capacity to be a pass catching capable running back but I don't view him and Chris Carson in very different lights when you look at what well, Jason just made the point how does Mike Evans end up the wide receiver one it's capability to produce an ungodly amount of touchdowns <laughs> that's what Sony Michelle has the capability to do in this offense for the Super Bowl champion you saw multiple 100 yard games in the playoffs Six touchdowns in the playoff run. This was a player that, you know, when he went down halfway through the season, people said, oh, no, that's it. Sony's gone. Done. Finished. Came back. Didn't just come back. Came back and was outstanding. Looks, looks outstanding in camp. Looks outstanding in the preseason. Looks like he'll be the bell cow. And so Sony Michelle being drafted late third round, early fourth round, the best value when you are looking for somebody that can finish in that top range. So he is my official fantasy Football MVP for 2019. To speak to how he's looked in preseason, that last preseason game just wowed me. I mean, he 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 looked so fast. His shiftiness was there, powerful. I mean, he looked like a superstar running back. I know it's just one preseason game, well, he but we, a, we saw it in the in the playoffs in the Super Bowl run last year. He caught a pass in the preseason, you know, 15 yards down the field, where on first glance, you know, they wear similar numbers, 26, 28. I was like, oh, that's James White. Oh, no, that's not James White. That was Sonny Michel. If, if that becomes a part of, and you don't need 50. For Sony, you don't need 50 receptions. No, you just need like 30. Like 30 receptions and then end up with 15, 16 touchdowns somehow, which is, he's better than the Garrett Blunt, and Blunt's done that in that offense. And you know that Tom Brady, it's defense, it's the running game. I like the odds of Sonny Michel. At a minimum, outperforming ADP. You're super happy with him. Best case scenario, you're a top five running back. 
Uh, my fantasy MVP should surprise nobody because recently I was saying I wish we had another my guy because he would be in. And this basically is, it's Tyler Lockett. Hard Lockett. Hard Lockett. <laughs> Can't tell Lockett. Hot Lockett is... <laughs> you can do the whole bit. I'll do the whole bit. Diarrhea pocket. Thank you. Um, Tyler Lockett is a great wide receiver. And the narrative around him, the reason why he's not being drafted as, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a one or even as a locked and loaded two is because... Locketed and loaded. Oh, That's locketed the, and yeah. loaded two. It's just sitting right there. Is because... I was thinking it. All <laughs> of the narrative has been about regression. Right. Uh, we've talked about it. You've talked about it. I've talked about it. The fact that you can't be as efficient as he was last season. Regression is coming on. You know, it, it's, Russell Wilson is not going to have a perfect passer rating throwing to Tyler Lockett for a second year in a row. But all of the focus can't be only on regressing from these abnormal, historic, unbelievable numbers. Some of them maybe should focus on the fact that he had unbelievable, historic, phenomenal numbers because he's really good. Tyler Lockett's had a career where he's been derailed by injury, but through the last several years, he's one of Matt Harmon's reception perception guys who've popped off the page as a great wide receiver. And here's what I want to bring up. Think about Doug Baldwin, right? Doug Baldwin. Thinking, over closing my eyes. Yes, close, remembering. Your, close your eyes and think about. It was a good time. So Doug Baldwin. For three of the last four years, obviously not last season when he got too injured and was forced into retirement, the three previous seasons, he was the wide receiver 8, the wide receiver 10, and the wide receiver 13. And we could go, okay, well, yeah, but he was the clear number one, yada, yada. But think about his targets through that time. 103, 125, 116. But, but, but Jason. <laughs> yes, voice of public opinion. That was a completely different offense with a different offensive coordinator and a different priority to the passing game. Yes, but that's why I bring up... Thank you, Miss Piggy, <laughs> <laughs> for your question. Um, oh, Kermit. <laughs> that, that, it's a very valid point because totally different offense, totally different coordinator, but the, but the same quarterback and I believe the same amount of target. Th that was the issue when we were talking the other day was was that there, it's not a huge passing volume, right? Like, how many targets is Tyler Lockett going to be able to see? Well, my point is Doug Baldwin did it with just barely over 100 three years in a row. Tyler Lockett is going to get his on the weekly basis and certainly on the season. There's no other options. I trust Russell Wilson to get the job done. And if you're talking about, I mean, you, you know, those, those few targets – 14 touchdowns, 7 touchdowns, 8 touchdowns for Doug Baldwin. And and also, don't forget, Doug Baldwin is gone. He, I know we feel like he was gone last year, but he played 13 games. He received 73 targets. He was actually there, and now that is a vacated role that has not been filled by anybody other than Tyler Lockett. I think Tyler Lockett is locketed to be a great fantasy. The nice thing Why about Tyler Lockett and what his role is in the offense and they paid him and they paid him a lot when they did it is the fact that you could look really wrong for like two quarters with Tyler Lockett and then look really right it's just one play I mean he's such a big play guy Russell Wilson buying time in the pocket means the ball goes out to Tyler Lockett I mean that's the way it works Ooh. so Mike your fantasy football MVP pick you'll close us out here what does the hitman have for us? Yeah, much like Jason's pick, this should come as no surprise because he was in the running for my my guys. I'm going with Devonta Freeman. I'm going to go with a player who has been the overall number one fantasy running back because I think the only thing to fear about Devonta Freeman is injury. Oh, I thought he was going to say fear itself. <laughs> well, that's probably okay. Two things: <laughs> fear itself and injury. He's guaranteed. Like he is, he's locked in, or locketed in, as Jason would say, to his thank you to his role as the number one running back in a very high-powered offense. We're, this is not Russell Wilson, who's going to throw for thirty-four hundred yards type of offense. This is Matt Ryan, who will be up at forty-five hundred yards. This will be one of the best offenses in the entire league. 
Devonta Freeman has he had back to back years of, of eleven rushing touchdowns, led the league in rushing touchdowns when he had his number one year. And then on top of that, he's had seasons of ninety seven targets, sixty five targets. And then those targets kind of evaporated because Steve Sarkeesian doesn't know how to use his best offensive weapons. Look at look at the lack of touchdowns for Julio Jones and things like that. Freeman is a really, really good player. Look at who's behind him. The Atlanta Falcons don't even know who's behind Devonta Freeman in the number two role. Is it Edo Smith? Is it Brian Hill? Does it matter? The answer is no, because Devonta Freeman is the number one guy on a high-powered offense, and normally to get a player in that situation, you would have to pay a late first, at least a second-round pick. But Freeman, because of the fear of the injury, he has slipped into the third round. I'm buying the bounce back. I'm on board with you completely. And I will add one more fuel to the fire, which is just remembering. I mean, all of this contract talk with Ezekiel Elliott and Todd Gurley and, you know, what we've seen in recent years, we forget. Freeman is the fifth highest paid running back in football. Got He's paid. 27 years old. He's being paid in the, you know, it's not the same as Lev Bell, Gurley, David Johnson, and um, I'm forgetting one. But he's being paid in that upper echelon of running back money. He's over $8 million a year to be the guy. They're not going to give up on him quickly. They're not going to, you know, try to find a replacement for a guy getting paid those numbers. If they believe he still has it left same age as David Johnson. So I'm buying the bounce back because I just don't see the competition. Look, the guy ran for 4.9 yards per carry last year. Yep. On 14 carries <laughs> on 14 carries nice yeah the consistency chart not one to look at for last season but, no but that's why you get him at a discount so i like the pick i like the pick that is it for the fantasy mvp episode i want to thank everybody that contributed from the fantasy football community you guys are awesome you all do incredible work and i mean that sincerely wait it's a kind of like you know it's a brotherhood of mm -hmm. sorts, yeah. um, a, a community, camaraderie in the industry. Even though we you know, compete on different little things, we're all seeking the same thing, which is to help you win your league. We're very passionate. It's a healthy co-opetition. Yes, yes. And so um, Brad Evans, Adam Rank, Jamie Eisenberg, Evan Silva, J.J. Zacharis, and Marcus Grant, Jake Seeley, and the illustrious Matthew Berry. We appreciate you guys contributing to this episode of the show. We're looking forward to uh, why didn't why didn't you name me? Well, I, I was also a contributor on. Thank this you episode. to Jason Moore. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was. That, I'm not going to turn on you right now. This show's <laughs> been so good. So, um, send us your fantasy MVP picks. Yeah. we'd love to hear from you. Either comment on YouTube at the FF Ballers on Twitter. We'd love to hear who you think either whether you believe some of these picks today or whether you've got a dark horse for a fantasy football MVP for this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Congrats on all your drafts and those drafting this weekend. That's it for us. We'll be back tomorrow, the fantasy footballers. Enjoy that preseason week four football. Oh, yeah, that's happening too. But the season starts soon. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, do not forget, head over to pristineauction.com. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. You don't want to miss it. If you go to footclangiveaway.com, you can get an entry to win an Alvin Kamara jersey just by signing up for free on pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you do that. You get $5 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. That's pristineauction.com. And remember, this episode was brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. No matter where you fall on the offense versus defense debate, Head & Shoulders will give you a 100% flake-free scalp because it's defense against flakes. Uh, like I said, offense. Yes. For your hair. One thing we can agree on is Troy Palomalo's hair is fantastic, yes. and it was insured for a million dollars by head and shoulders in 2000 worth every penny check out head and shoulders at walmart.com or look and find it at your local walmart store